Bitcoin miner pool in to issue IOU tokens after suspending with draws. So apparently this was one of the largest Bitcoin mining pools and they will be issuing IOU tokens to customers who were impacted after the pool froze with draws last week, which was due to a liquidity crisis, which is going to end up becoming a meme because every single exchange that's gone down has been impacted by a liquidity crisis. Where are their market makers? I don't even know anymore. Anyways, um, they said it will it will calculate user balances across native wallet and mining pool before issuing six IOU tokens. IOU will reflect one-to-one -one ratio of user balances across Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDT, Litecoin, Zcash, and Doge. The intention is to burn IOU tokens batch by batch and users can withdraw these tokens at any time. I actually want to toss this over to Will because I know that you are a mining guy and you work for a mining company. Okay, you can hear me though. Just checking, right? I think we're all yeah, good we at this point. can hear you. <laughs> Taco Tuesday almost uh, splattered on its face there, but we're back. Let's talk about this mining story. <laughs> Disclosure, I do work for a mining company, so I have a little take on this as well. Poolin is a pretty important Bitcoin pool in this space. What they do is basically allow you to point your Bitcoin machine at the pool, then the pool collects all that hash rate and points it at the Bitcoin network. Bitcoin network gives Bitcoin back to the pool, and then the pool breaks it up and gives it all to the miners who are using their work to earn Bitcoin. In this instance, Poolin, which has been growing pretty extensively, had a liquidity crunch, meaning they were not able to pay out their miners, or at least that's what we know so far. And this is likely due, but not for sure known, uh, because of a few projects they booted up, including with the likes of Three Arrows Capital and BlockFi back in the spring. Uh, Poolin was working on some really interesting loan products that included Three Rows Capital as like a lending, lending service. BlockFi was involved in a lending service. A lot of these projects we don't know much about, right? We just have some blog posts and we don't have much follow-up, but we know what happened with Three Rows Capital. We know what happened with BlockFi. And so maybe there's a reason why liquidity problems are happening at Poolin. Pools are actually pretty basic models. There's not much complexity to them. So seeing something like this is actually a little odd, right? So you have to look for some sort of third party uh, reason for why they're having problems. And a lending scheme that went south is something that sort of makes sense. Now, Poolin is trying to make investors whole and they're doing the classic Bitfinex technique, which is launch a token and hope at one day you make all the money back and you can pay out investors. It is an IOU. It's basically a share in the company. And I think you can even swap these tokens for shares in the company or for machines themselves. It's an interesting strategy. It has worked in the past for some exchanges and for some parties out there that have had losses, but it also has not worked in the past. And so we'll have to find out if Poolin is strong enough to move through this. One note is they have, they have lost a lot of their Bitcoin hash rate. So the amount of miners using their service has decreased by about half since this occurred. Adam, I'm going to throw it up to you to get your take. Yeah. So as you said, this type of sort of IOU token is not without precedent. It has been used in the past, both to good results and bad results. And it's worth sort of considering what the point of doing something like this is. Because you look at a project like Mt. Gox, Mt. Gox obviously collapsed in the spring of 2013, many years ago, and people who had balances there still have not seen any money come out of that. So that's kind of what this token is intended to do. It's intended to allow people to effectively harness free market mechanisms to make decisions that are better than and simply having no option and having your balance just stuck there. And essentially what happens is there's two types of users here. One type of user needs short-term liquidity. They need money now and they, it's not like good enough to just be like, hey, there's a balance here. That's the worst outcome for them. So what tokenizing these, uh, these debts effectively do is they allow somebody to then take their balances and to sell them at a discount on a separate market to somebody who has a longer term time frame, who doesn't need money right now, but who over the next couple of years perhaps uh, you know, would like to make a greater return than they would if they, you know, just were holding straight Bitcoin. Now, there is an element of risk here, and that's where the discount comes in. The more people think that the project isn't going to respond or isn't going to recover from this and eventually pay these back, the lower the price will be that you can get for selling those IOUs today. And conversely, to the extent that people believe that they are going to pay them back, the higher the price will be. Uh, you know, relatively speaking, but it will still trade it at a discount in really any sort of reasonable circumstance. Um, 
it's also worth discussing briefly, as, as sort of Will mentioned, that this is weird for a pool to be insolvent. And really, that's what we're talking about here. The reason why you freeze withdrawals is because you are functionally insolvent today. They are claiming that that insolvency will, is a temporary thing and that they will not be insolvent at some point in the future. And that would rely on effectively investments that they've made with what certainly to me on the outside look like customer mind funds. Uh, you know, being being able to to claw that back. So to the extent that it's three arrows capital that they loan this money to, well, then they got to earn it back with fees. And as you said, that's a challenging dynamic when they're losing a lot of their market share by nature of people not really trusting them because they are functionally insolvent. So it's a difficult situation, but these types of tokens do at least give people options. And I'm always in favor of people having options that then allow them to pick what is the best worst case scenario for them. Uh, Will, I saw your hand go up. What's up? Yeah, two last thoughts on this is we don't know what the three arrows capital and BlockFi relationship was. The time was disclosed as some sort of minor financing program, which was really popular over the bull market as the prices of machines went up quite a ton. People were figuring out, like, how do I buy this thing in the first place, let alone plug it in? And so we saw a lot of these minor financing programs pop up, but they're new, they're odd, it's hard to price these things, and a lot of these projects actually fell flat on their face. So that's not necessarily unsurprising. It's also another relationship here with Poolin where they actually are a big mining firm itself, not just a pool. So you have to ask yourself, like, maybe this is related to that. We've seen a lot of miners struggle recently as energy prices have gone up and Bitcoin price has gone down to the depths. Uh, so we don't really know yet. I'd love to see some investigative reporting around this. Poolin is definitely a big fixture within the Bitcoin space. I think a lot of people will be upset if this thing goes any more south. Jen, to you. Yeah, the story says that users on Telegram are confused about how this IOU token works. And so just like I do before every story like this, I went on off to the pool and website to find out if they are communicating exactly how this works and what it means. And surprise, surprise, they are not. And, and so I think for this token to work, as Adam was saying earlier, you know, people need to believe in the token. They need to believe in what you're saying. And if you're not mentioning anything about how this actually works for your end user, it's a complete disservice to this to the entire plan that you've created to solve the problem at hand. And so I really, really urge projects in the space to have a proper communications plan, even if it's bad news. If you can tell the user what to expect, why it happened, and that you're working on it, it's better than just not saying anything at all and hoping that everything will work out. Wendy? Marketing and communications are immensely important in every single industry. It doesn't matter if it's a tech-driven industry. You still need people to articulate what is happening into an easy-to-understand way because if you don't do that, no one knows what's happening and number goes down.